Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into a whole new slide just to build this project from uh, the ground up. So I'm gonna right click here in Story View and choose New Scene. And that brings up a uh, thumbnail for a new slide, so double click it. And let's go ahead and just start out by building our initial buttons. So I'm gonna insert a simple shape. Now pretty much anything in Storyline can be a button. You can use text, you can use shapes, objects, images, characters even, pretty much anything. So there's my initial shape, which will later become a button. I'm gonna go ahead and add the visual feedback for it. So for the visual feedback, we're gonna add states, states like the hover effect, right? What, what, what did the learner see when they actually mouse over that object? Well, maybe it gets a little bit lighter. So I'll change the color here. And maybe it gets a little bit darker when it's actually selected or active. So selected, and then we'll just change the fill shape down here. Okay, so that gives me each of my states for the button. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this three times. So Control D, Control D, Control D. Control D is one way to duplicate. You can also do it by Control click dragging and Control C. All right, so they're all on the slide. I'm gonna go ahead and just align these so it looks a little bit uh, neater than it does. And let's go ahead and really quick just add some text on the slide. We just want to add some uh, just some heading text, tabs, interaction, just something so we can see uh, really how the content might look. And then we'll call this one body text placeholders or something like that. This one will be our title text. So I'm going to select headings and we'll make it a little bit bigger and bring that one over, select the two, and let's go ahead and also align these. And once they're aligned, I can press Control G to group them. And then I'm gonna add just a, like an image placeholder graphic right there for us so that we actually have something there. So I'll call this one image placeholder and text placeholder. Okay, pretty much in set. Now I wanna go ahead and add the slide layers over here for each of the content pieces. So I'll make a new layer and I'll call this one layer one, okay? And there's nothing on it, but I'm gonna to return to my base layer so I can copy the two placeholders that I just set up. So Control C, come over here to layer one, Control V to paste them. And you'll also notice that the, the base layer objects are showing through. Well, if I come down here to base layer objects, I can actually expand this little arrow and I can deselect those two objects from the base layer. These are actually on this base layer right here. But I can turn off their visibility from the slide layer. So I'm just gonna update this text right here to tab one, right? So you can see that. I'll leave the image right there. Duplicate this and call this one layer two. And I'll change the color of this object just so we can see that things are changing. Turn off the visibility. There we go. Make this one layer three. And so this is kind of why I like to get everything or at least one object or one element in place. And then from there, you can just duplicate everything that you've already set up and then make minor adjustments um, for uh, the, the different um, repeating elements. And then one more time for layer four. And there's this, and we'll make that one orange turn off the two of these, and then make that layer four. So at this point, really all we need to do is come back down to the base layer, right? So we have each of these changes, and we want to add triggers to show each of those slide layers. And we do that by selecting one of our objects, adding a trigger, so show layers, what we wanna do, and show layer one, when user clicks rectangle one. I'm gonna copy this, since I already have this one now set up, select all three of those buttons, and then press paste. Now paste lets me quickly add and make those changes. So if I minimize this so we can see it, so rectangle two will go to layer two, rectangle three is gonna to go to layer three, and then four. And at this point, the last thing I wanna do is actually select all these buttons and make a button set out of them. The reason the button set's gonna be important is it'll let only one of these two ob one of these four objects be selected at one time. Let's go ahead and preview, and let's go ahead and test our file. And you can see how only one of these buttons at one time is selected. That's the benefit of the button sets and each of our content pieces is loading. 
Well, folks, that's all there is to building a tabs interaction in Articulate Storyline.